Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and today we're gonna make a Halloween costume. And I'm usually kind of the last minute Sally when it comes to Halloween costumes because I like to wait until I am inspired to uh, to be what I'm gonna be. Um, and last year I really loved my costume. I was kind of a witch doctor, headhunter, cannibal type um, person. And it was one of those last minute, the day of Halloween costumes. I really loved it, but I didn't do a DIY on it because I used so many random things that I didn't think that people would have these things around to make the costume. So I thought this year I would do something that is easy to do at home. You can find the uh, supplies really easily and you don't need a lot of experience to make it. And this video is brought to you by CostumeYeti.com. They have a great costume contest going on right now. You can enter for free, enter as many times as you want, and you can even enter past costumes as long as you haven't entered those costumes before at CostumeYeti.com. There's a lot of great ideas there too. So if you're kind of stuck for what you want to be this Halloween, you can go check it out. The categories they have are most original, adults, kids, couples, family, dog, baby, cosplay, and group. And there are prizes from $100 to $500 with a total prize that they're giving away. The total amount of prizes is over $8,000. So you get a great chance of winning with all those different categories. But even more, what's better, I think, is all the ideas that you get there. I mean, it's better than Pinterest. So I think that's uh, worth checking out on its own. So this is a costume that I'm going to enter and um, I am starting off with some fleece. I just went to the fabric store and got two yards of fleece. I paid $7.98 at Martin's. I'm lucky I have a really inexpensive fabric store nearby. And um, I got two yards because I know that would be more than enough, but I wanted some extras because I wanted some accessories with my costume. So I just did up like a four minute sketch here um, of how I want the costume to be. I'm thinking that I'm just gonna need one seam along the side for um, for attaching the edge. It's gonna go over one shoulder. I'm not sure if I'm gonna knot it or sew it up there. I wanted to make kind of a head wrap because um, it's cold. I live in Maine, so when we're going out on Halloween night, it is brisk. So I wanted a costume that I'd be able to wear like leggings and a turtleneck underneath, um, so I'd be warm enough when we went out and, um, and trick-or-treated. Also, I'm going to be making a torch and a little bone to go in my hair and a necklace with some, um, faux, um, bone beads that I have because I just think it would kind of help nail this costume. And I'm also going to wear a pair of boots that I have and I'm just going to hopefully have enough left over to put, um, put some of this kind of faux tiger fleece trim on. So I'm using a mannequin here. If you don't have one of these, then, you know, see if you can get a friend that can help you or you can kind of just hold it up to yourself and, um, clip and pin as you go. So I'm just going to see how far the two yards just on its own get me. It's a very long, um, kind of material so I think that I'll probably end up cutting some off the bottom okay yeah see that's gonna go all the way to the floor I could keep it like that but I think that's a little bit too long now rather than using pins um, something that's a little bit easier when you're kind of trying to make up your own pattern is to use like clothes pins or clips and you can just kind of grab the fabric and I keep all mine in a bucket here if you live in a warmer area you might want to I go with a lighter fabric, maybe like a rayon or something like that, just so you're not like sweating. Or if you know you're going into an indoor party where it's going to be like really, really warm. Now on the edge, I'm thinking that I'm going to sew down here and just fringe the leftover. That might be a little too much though, so I think I'll probably uh, trim it down first because otherwise I'm going to be wasting a bunch of fabric and then... Um, and then after I sew it, I'm going to fringe this. Now, if you don't have a sewing machine, what you can do is you can fringe it and tie all the way down, tie the edges to each other. And I'll explain that after I sew and fringe it, just so you know what I mean. That way you don't have to have a sewing machine. It's kind of how you do the no sew throws and no sew pillows that are really popular for Christmas gifts and whatnot. So what I'm going to do is cut this down and then um, I'll show you when we're ready to start sewing. I moved the camera so you could get a better look here of what I'm doing. So I cut about a foot off the edge and tied it up at the shoulder. And now I'm going to trim it um, a little below knee length because I don't want to be tripping over any um, of the long pieces. And that will also give me plenty of excess to make all my accessories out of. Now I'm going to put these clips along the edge of my uh, garment here. I did have a little bit longer in the back. I don't know if you can see that, but I have it a few inches longer in the back. I figure sometimes it's nicer to have a little bit, a little bit more in, down, in behind there to cover <laughs> in case you're bending over, picking up kids spilled candy and stuff. It's always better to, uh, to have a little longer in the back for us ladies, I think. I'll 
probably have leggings on underneath it anyway, but you know, just for modesty sake. sake. So I'm going to sew about um, five or six inches in from the edge. That way, if it's a little big, that's not a big deal. I don't want it to be too tight, even though fleece has a stretch to it. I really don't think clingy fleece is a good look. So, um, so I'm going to take that right over to the sewing machine and just stitch right along that until I get to about this, um, this point right here. Something I really love about fleece is that it doesn't fray, so any of these little nips or tucks or fringes that we add are not going to have to be hemmed or finished in any other way. So that makes fleece extremely wonderful to work with if you're a beginner sewer or for any sorts of costume projects. And plus it's warm and it feels soft, so you won't have kids kind of complaining about scratchy costumes. And I'm pretty much making this for eight bucks, so you really can't beat that. You can't buy a mask for that. So I have just fed the bottom part of my fleece in. This extra that's hanging over the back is the uh, the part that's longer in the back side. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to start sewing where the two pieces overlap. So what you want to do is I lower, lower your presser foot, put your needle in, stitch a few stitches. Then you want to back stitch to lock those down. And then you're going to continue sewing up until you get to that first closed pin that you put down there to indicate where you need to stop sewing. Keep one hand under the material as you go to prevent any bunching. Once I'm at the point where I have that first clip, I'm going to back stitch again. So stitch a few stitches in reverse and then back on top to lock them down. Now we're going to put this back on the mannequin and we're going to add our uh, cuts and fringes. We may need to cut out some of the bulk under the arm there, but we won't know that until we try it on. You want to have a nice pair of sewing shears. Sewing shears cut through fabric really well, as long as you keep them for fabric only. I'm going to hold both sides together and I'm going to snip until I get to about a quarter inch before my sewing line. And I'm going to make these fringes about an inch apart. So here's where I was saying if you didn't have a sewing machine, you could knot your fringes together. So in this case, you'd want to lay this out on the floor, just lay it flat. And then you'd want to make a chalk line where you want your, um, where you kind of your sewing line would be. And then what you would do is you would just knot these two together, you would go all the way down and you keep doing that until you had them all um, all knotted and that would eliminate the need to sew. As long as you made it so it wasn't too clingy, you're not going to have any gaps or anything like that. So it'll be completely modest and um, it's just an easier way to do it. It's not really quicker, but if you don't have a sewing machine or you don't like to use a sewing machine, it's definitely a doable solution and it's going to look fantastic. But for now, I'm just going to go and finish doing my one inch strips all the way down this side. When you get to the bottom of the fringe, if your back is longer, you might have this uh, kind of awkward, really wide piece. All you got to do for that is just trim it off. But save that because you, may use, you might want to use that for an accessory or something. I always just keep all my scraps in a bag and then I can also let the kids use it whenever they have a project they want to do. Like maybe they want to make a little costume for their Barbie doll or something. It's just uh, nice to have the scraps on hand for that. We also have this area up here. Um, I don't think I want to cut that yet to taper it up because if I end up having way too much space in here, then I might just trim a few more fringes and tie them like I was telling you before, just to uh, cinch it up a little bit more. But I'll need to wait until I'm ready to try that on for that portion. Now we need to make the fringes on the bottom. So I have my mannequin set to my height so I can see that I've got this about knee length. So I could probably go up probably mid thigh, maybe like six inches with my fringe. So I could probably kind of cut some little um, zigzags up about that high and still have everything under wraps if you know what I mean. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to kind of go up and cut some kind of wedge shaped pieces out so I'll just end up with a rough and ragged end and that's what I want it to look like. I want it to look um, <laughs> as authentic as I imagine these cave people dressed with their um, animal skins and um, and everything. I just want it to look kind of just raggedy and fun. So uh, that will also give a lot more movement to this uh, costume since it is a fairly thick, stiff, um, stiff fabric. So go ahead and put as many um, kind of just tatters as you want. Okay, I think this is looking pretty good. Any other cuts or adjustments need to be made while I'm wearing it. So, um, but the only thing would be to see if I need to fringe and tie up any more on the side. 
cut off any excess there. And if I want the fringes on the bottom taller, then um, then I can just slit up the kind of the V shapes, add little slits above the V shapes, and um, and that will give me more long fringe if I decide that 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 this is just a little too long the way it is. That'll just give it a little bit more movement and make it easier to walk around in it because you want your costume to be comfortable, especially if you're doing um, like parties with kids and whatnot, you might be chasing around after them or walking outside trick-or-treating with them. You want something that can, you know, that you're going to be comfortable and feel good wearing because I think your, custo your costume should make you feel good, um, whether you're doing something completely out of character or, um, or you're doing something fun and playful. I really think that, that you should really feel good wearing it. So the next thing I'm going to want to do is to make the accessories that are that are made out of the fabric so I'm gonna be making a head wrap and cuffs for my arms and I know that if I cut off this much because I just wrapped it around my head that I'll have plenty of, um, of fabric for that so I mean nothing fancy I'm just gonna cut this off here with my sharp scissors very awkward to do in front of the camera I'm not even really I'm just cutting this I mean really do you need to see this I'm cutting this seriously just cutting a big chunk of fabric and as you've noticed, I haven't really measured much other than, you know, to measure to make sure it's big enough to cover me. Um, I've been doing this pretty much all, um, all just by hand. So I'm going to cut uh, one strip about, I would say five inches wide. That's going to be for the head wrap. That will keep my ears warm if it's cold out. And then the remaining fabric, I'm going to fold that in half and cut it. And then that's going to make my wrist wraps. And I'll show you a little bit more detail at the sewing machine, how we're going to put that together, just to make it a little more understandable. And we're back at the sewing machine. And I, I did one of my little uh, fringe wristlets here, just so um, I could have a good, good idea of sizing and whatnot. So the thing is, when you're making this, you need to account this cuff here that you're that you're sewing, you need to account for enough room for not only your wrist, um, because I tried that and I actually made it too small because I just measured my wrist and not my hand, but you need enough room for your hand to slide through this. So um, you need to account for that. And fleece does have some stretch, but not a ton. So you really need to make sure you account for getting your hand in there. So what I ended up with was a piece of fabric that was, and you could adjust this if you want a longer fringe, um, Mine is six inches by, and it's folded in half, so by about 20 inches, because I have it folded in half already. So I wanted, I needed the allowance for my wrist to be, I'm just going to measure it from the seam to the fold, and I've got, I've got small wrists and hands, so you want to definitely measure yours and make sure you have enough. I have four and a half inches from the, uh, from the seam to the edge of the fabric. So I'm going to put, and you don't really need to pin a small piece like this because it is, um, it doesn't shift too much. It kind of Velcros to itself when you're sewing with it. It's very easy to sew with. I am not an experienced sewer by any means. I hate using patterns. This stuff is da bomb. So easy to use. All right, so I'm gonna, just going to slide this in, and I'm going to measure from my needle to the fold four and a half inches like that. I don't know if you can see that, but I've just, I just put my little measuring tape down there. Put down my press of foot. Put always put your needle in your material before you start with the uh, press before you start going because sometimes your thread will pull through and then you have to rethread. I hate rethreading my my machine. And I'd love to say that I'm using white thread so you can see the stitches really well on camera, but it's actually because I'm too lazy to change the thread. Nobody's gonna notice when my costume when I'm moving around dancing at a party or out in the dark trick treating. It's fine. <laughs> and that is why I will never be a master seamstress. We go forward, we go back, cha-cha-cha, lock it down, go forward again, all the way to the end. And then we're going to go backwards and forwards. All right. And then you just do a little turny turn to yourself to pull that needle up, release the thread, and snip off your ends. So we're going to do the same thing we did with the edge of our garment. We're simply going to cut strips. This time I want them a little bit smaller. I want them about a half an inch quarter to a half so they have a lot of swingy movement when you're wearing them but you want to do that all the way to the edge and that's how you make the cuff easy peasy lemon squeezy let me tell you so for the headband um if you make it longer you could actually tie it i'm thinking so if i go like that i've got about it's best just to wrap it around your head and see so i had about i would say inch and a half overlap so what i'm going to do is put this is pretty re reversible i don't really see that one side is a lot nicer than the other quite frankly on this so that's kind of nice about this fabric something you might want to consider if you're buying so i'm going to sew this so i have about an inch from the end inch yeah about an, about an inch from the end i can always sew another seam if it's too big but if it's too small i gotta rip a seam out and i hate ripping seams out 
I am a real lazy sewer, if you haven't noticed. That's why I, I think I'm, I don't quilt very much because I just don't have the precision or the desire to have that precision. I just want to do it, you know, and I want to do it and uh, do it quickly and be able to enjoy the fruits of my labor. And we go backwards here. All right, so that way, and I'm gonna trim off the extra so I don't have a big, like, bulky thing in my head. Turn it right side out. Let's let's see how this, I hope this stretches enough to go over my head now that I'm thinking about it, because it doesn't stretch all that much. So let's see. Ah. Oog, ah, fire, fire. <laughs> Hey, that worked out all right. And then I can go over my ears there if it's a little, little nippy out on Halloween. There we go. Okay, so now we just gotta get our jewelry and our little bone hair clip done and we're gonna be off to the races. Making the necklace is uh, actually pretty easy. I, what I did was I looked at all of my natural type of beads, stones, chips, anything that looks like they could be um, used kind of in a tribal primitive design, I pulled out. And what I ended up grabbing were some stones, some faux pearls, and some uh, jasper chips. These are not expensive pieces, but I think they're really gonna uh, hammer home the look of my design. And it might actually be something that I could wear after. So what I'm going to do first is just grab a piece of wire and I'm going to grab a clip to put on the end here so my beads don't slide off while I'm working. This is called a bead bug and it just kind of grabs the end of your wire and this is just uh, some tiger tail. I thought I had copper left but I was out so I'm just using some gold tone and I'm just going to make sure I have enough to make my necklace. I want the necklace about 15 inches. I want it choker length. Uh, but I'm cutting extra just to make sure I have room to put my clasp on. So the reason I like to put this on instead of putting my clasp on first is that if I decide that I need to extend it more or I need to take some beads off, I can do that and I don't have to um, work with a clasp or I don't have to unstring everything. So first I'm going to start by stringing um, a few inches of the Jasper chips. Now that I have about four or five inches of the uh, Jasper chips down, I'm gonna start the um, center portion. This is the part that's really gonna uh, show and I'm just kind of alternating the faux pearl daggers and these uh, stones. They might actually be a type of Jasper too, I'm not sure. And I really hope you guys uh, enter the contest at Costume Yeti. And if you do, would you please leave a comment down below so that I can go and check out your costume. I'm always curious to see what you guys do and what you guys make. And also I'm curious what you look like because I always see your little pictures on the avatars, but it's so nice to, uh, to put a face to the name. Um, there's a lot of great ideas, like I mentioned before, for family costumes. And um, I'm thinking I might enter the costume I did when my husband and I, we were the, I was the Bride of Frankenstein and he was Frankenstein's monster. And, um, uh, we, I have a couple videos on how we did those costumes on my channel from a couple of years ago. I think those would be really fun to add in the couple's costume. And um, maybe I'll put my costume that I did last year, my witch doctor costume, because that was a lot of fun. But mostly, I personally, I don't care about winning. I would put it there just to inspire others and give some other people some ideas about last minute costumes, because I don't think you have to go out and spend a fortune. Now, you can also enter costumes that are store-bought. There's no rules against that. We all style things differently and we all have creative ways to um, to turn some store-bought stuff into some really cool, unique costumes. So after you've got your center part, your center montage here done, I just love the way that, that kind of, I, I think this is gonna be a really cool texture to have against our fabric. Then you wanna again do another few inches of the Jasper and um, make sure you have the right length and then I'll show you how to put the clasps on in just a second. I finished putting on the last of the Jasper chips that I'm going to use and now it's time to add a clasp and since I'm working on tiger tail I'm gonna need to use crimp beads and I'm gonna use a little lobster clasp now if you had beads with big enough holes you could use like a leather cord or a hemp cord or something very natural looking like that but I didn't the beads on these were way too little the holes were way too little to go through um, my hemp cord so I decided to just uh, use my tiger tail so I actually like to put two beads down two crimp beads because I'm afraid that if a bead breaks that I don't want to lose all of my beads so I do that as a safety feature you don't have to I just feel a little bit better about that so I've got my two tiny little crimp beads on there and then I'm gonna put my lobster clasp on and I am going to just give myself a little bit of wiggle room between that last bead and those crimps. And then I'm, I hope this is focusing. I'm gonna take the um, end of my tiger tail and go through both of those. 
and just pull it, not super tight. Now I'm gonna use crimping pliers, but if you don't have crimping pliers, um, you can just squash these with a pair of pliers. It won't look as professional, but um, especially if this is just something you're doing once, it's not a big deal. So I'm just gonna squash down that first one with the, there's different channels in your crimp, crimping pliers and the your package, the pliers came in, should have instructions, but basically you're flattening it kind of with the first, um, with your first channel and then you're putting it in the second channel to give it that little U shape and then you're putting it back in the first channel to squash it down. All right, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm actually showing you the second crimped one I did because I pulled that out of camera, out of frame on mistake. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm flattening the bead first in the first channel of my crimping pliers, then I'm making it kind of U shaped and that's separating those two wires in the second um, little column. Hopefully that shows up. And then I'm turning it on its side, putting it back in the first column. And this is a little tricky. I got to gonna kind of squash that in half. And with a small bead like this, sometimes it works great and sometimes it doesn't. Okay, it did, it worked good. So there, now I have two crimp beads on there just in case um, one breaks, the other one's there for safety. And I'm just gonna trim it fairly closely so because I don't like to have that pokey bit, um, that last wire poking me. Um, I have tried feeding it down through the other beads and that eventually they tend they tend to work work themselves out and then poke me anyway so I find that kind of irritating so I don't do that anymore so here I'm going to use the cord left over on this side as my um, as my clasp and I'm going to get two beads again and the other end of the clasp is going to be done the same way. I put the two beads on, the two crimp beads, if you can see those right there on my finger, and I am going to feed my wire through them. And I just want to make sure I have a big enough loop there that I can grab my, um, my lobster clasp on, and I am going to crimp these the same way I did before. And if you, and I could probably do both steps at once. Just kind of skip between each bead as I do it. And like I said, if you don't have crimping pliers, it's not a big deal. Um, you can just squash them with your regular pliers. And for a piece of costume jewelry you're gonna wear once, who cares, you know, seriously. Although I think this is kind of cute and I probably would wear it again because I like that kind of rustic tribal, earthy, crunchy style. And so to close it, you see you'd simply just open up your lobster clasp now that's why I'm using a lobster clasp because I don't really like lobster clasps that much, but I figured for costume jewelry it's perfect. So it's easy to put on and off. And there you have your necklace. Now the other accessory that I want to make, oh, isn't that pretty, um, is a hair clip. And uh, the reason I'm doing this as a hair clip because you can, it's gonna be a lot easier to put this bone in your hair. And all this is, is uh, they have bone ice cube molds at the dollar store, the Dollar Tree. And I just made a bone with Plaster of Paris and wiped some brown ink on it. That's all I did, very easy. And uh, they carry those molds every year around Halloween time. And because my clip is a little bit bigger than the bone that I have there, um, and I had this in my stash already. If you go and buy one, you can obviously buy one smaller. Uh, I'm just going to put some like uh, silk leaves down there because I figure a cave girl would probably have leaves stuck in her hair, right? Don't you think? I think it's totally plausible. And then I'm going to put some hot glue on the back of the bone. And I have no idea the longevity of this. I really wouldn't do this for any permanent piece of, uh, of jewelry, but I think it's going to be, I think it'll last as Halloween night anyway. Um, Plaster Paris will not do well if you get it wet or anything, but it'll, it'll get you through the night. And uh, there is our cute little hair accessory. So the only other thing we have left to do is to make the torch, which will be pretty easy. And I'm gonna get the costume on and show you how it all turned out. The torch is made um, differently. What we're gonna do is take a bunch of pieces of tissue paper in orange, yellow, and red, our nice flame colors, and we are gonna fold it in half the uh, hamburger way, you know, like that, not the hot dog way. And then we're gonna fold it in half one more time. And this time I'm gonna run my knife or scissors through this fold to give us um, an extra ends. Okay, and I'm actually gonna, stab, I'm gonna unfold it and fold it again so this part's a little bit shorter. And then we're gonna fringe it. And I know I mentioned it before, but I'm gonna mention it again. Don't use your sewing scissors for this. This is paper crafting scissors because it will dull your sewing scissors. 
So we're fringing this in about an inch and a quarter, I'd say, fringes. It's not really that important. And we're gonna make this with a old wrapping paper tube. And the reason I'm doing this instead of going outside and getting a stick is because I can plop a flashlight or a glow stick in the tube. Actually, a flashlight will work really good because it'll be nice and bright. I'll be able to plop a, um, a flashlight in there so that I have um, nice uh, illumination and people can see us and stuff when we're out trick-or-treating. So that's why I'm gonna do that. If you're going to an indoor party, although it would be cool to have a light-up torch, um, you know, you wouldn't have to necessarily do that. So what I'm doing is just putting some hot glue on the end here. And I'm gonna start rolling up my tissue paper. Now, after I've covered that, I'm going to just keep adding hot glue and keep rolling because you don't want that coming undone. Now, of course, if it's raining out on Halloween, this is not going to hold up. But what you could do is fluff it up and put a clear plastic bag or a shower cap over it or something so you could still have that light and still have that look because I know that if it's raining, you still go trick-or-treating. I know how it is. I've got kids. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't my first rodeo. And so then you can just kind of pull apart everything and fluff it up and make it look nice and full and fiery. So here I have the costume all done and um, I'm gonna back up so you can see the entire thing. Um, I, it's really comfortable actually and I think I got the fit pretty well. I mean, fleece is not the most slimming of fabrics but it is super comfortable. This is definitely something that could go up a few or down a few sizes, I think, and still fit fine. Um, the little wristlets are really comfortable. I didn't end up adding anything to the boots. I thought the boots were pretty substantial on their own, so I just left them that way. And um, all in all, I'm really happy with this. I like the jewelry, and uh, the clip is very comfortable in my hair. Um, and honestly, I didn't have to do anything different to my hair. I just had to just had to clip, clip it up, but if your hair is a little less, um, unruly is mine you could always tease it a bit to get a little bit more uh kind of i don't know wolfiness to it so that it looks a little mo more cavey girl but um but i'm pretty happy with this if you like halloween if you like to do costumes please check out costumeyeti.com and submit your photos of your past costumes or this year's costume for a chance to win cash prizes plus you also get to inspire other people with your costumes and be inspired by everybody else's i want to thank you so much for watching today please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new here and until next time happy crafting fire good candy good candy good